Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. If you haven't followed me yet, definitely click on that subscribe button and sign up for notifications so you know when my new videos pop up. I've got some really big things coming soon, so definitely stay tuned for that. Today we are talking about 2022 fails so far. We're at the mid-year point and we're going to go through the top five worst products of 2022 so far and then just a few things that were disappointments that I felt were kind of, you know, a good runner up type thing. So they're not quite terrible, but they are disappointing. And, you know, one of those things I actually like, it was just very disappointing for me. So uh, we'll get to that in a second. Let's start off with our top five worst products. These are not ranked in the level of how terrible they are. All five of these are things I would definitely recommend against unless you have a particular, like there's a particular type that you like that is different from you know, like characteristics that I look for in those products. So we'll talk about that as we go through them. First up, we're starting off with the Chanel Waterfresh Blush. I don't like these. I think they are gimmicky. Yes, you can get a nice look with them. Um, I feel like they are too much work for what you have to do to get a nice look. Building them up definitely is going to require layers. Um, you know, it's actually, they're more pigmented than I expected, I have to say. Uh, but it's just, it's messy to use. It's not really all that convenient. And it has a very high price tag. So for me, these are definitely a fail. Um, I'm not picking up more of these for sure. I I just, I don't love it. Um, so that would be one of my fails. Another one, we're looking at the Viseart Petite 4 palettes that came out for spring 2022. I'm really sad to say this. I love Viseart palettes, particularly the little Petite 4 ones that they come out with. I just love the size and shape of these. However, the pigmentation on some of the shades was really disappointing, like this blue one here. I mean, it's a stunning shade in the pan, and then you go to put it on, and look, it even swatches okay sometimes. That's because I dug through this thing. You can see it's all kind of ripped up because it's almost like this shadow always has hard pan. It's hard to get pigmentation on the eye with it. And it's just a lot of the shades are like barely there. So I was disappointed with these and they're just not your standard Viseart quality. So those are number four on the list with this blue one being the worst of the four in my opinion. Next we have the Jones Road What the Foundation. And this is one of those products that other people might like it, um, but it's a fail for me because it never really sets down and it dries down on your face. You always feel it. And perhaps in certain climates with certain skin types, that might be a benefit for some people. It's very hydrating, very moisturizing. If you have very dry skin, this might be something you like. It does not provide a ton of coverage. I don't love the shade that they shade matched me with. Perhaps the lighter shade would be better for me. But uh, I just, I don't really like this formula. And I just, yeah, I, for me, it's a fail because I want things to kind of set. I don't want to be able to feel them on my face if I touch my face. I have little kids and if they go and touch my face, I don't want them to be getting makeup on them. <laughs> so I I just, yeah, it's a fail for me, I think. There are, I think it's a, a great product for a select group of people, but I think the majority of people probably would not appreciate this to its fullest. So moving on to number two on the list, that is the Sisley Liquid Eyeshadows. And I picked up, I have a, a few of these here. I have three shades, but I brought two of them out because they're not all bad. This shade here that I have in shade number one, this champagne shade, is actually really nice. It goes on well, it performs well, it's smooth, it's beautiful, but the it, it's inconsistent. The formula is inconsistent with the shades. So this shade here, which I was super excited about, this green one, when you start blending this out, this is number six, by the way, when you blend this out, it gets really patchy and it's 
it just doesn't look good. Um, so, you know, I've tried many different ways of using these and I also have the dark brown. That one performs okay as well, but it's really this green one here is a true fail here. If I had just picked up the champagne and the dark brown, I would have really enjoyed these. But because I also grabbed the, the green one, which I was really looking forward to, and I saw how terribly this one performs, it kind of grouped them together in my mind as not being a good product. They should be consistent and they aren't. So I will not be purchasing more of them. I will be using the ones that I have, um, particularly, you know, I, I do like the, the espresso shade and, and this shade, but um, because of that green one, they're a fail. And it's, I was really looking forward to these. Sicily is one of my favorite brands, but this year they've been a little disappointing so far. And then last up, this is the Hermes Plein Air. Not the powder. Powder I love. This is the highlight in Mirage. Now it's shade number two in Mirage. I am hoping that they do get more shades, but the reason this is a fail isn't because of the shade, which, you know, isn't ideal for me, but it's still one that I can use. I think for me, you can see I had to dig this one. It gets heart pan like so easily. Um, I, I've seen like, I don't know if it's just the product is inconsistent or what, but other people have shared swatches with, with me of theirs and theirs are much more like pigmented. You get more product up. It's really hard for me to get product up on this. And then I almost always have to scrape it or at, use some tape or whatever to get hard pan off before using it again. And for something that costs this much, that is, I mean, it's ridiculous at any price point, to be honest, but especially at this price point, you know, when you're paying for luxury makeup, you shouldn't have to weed out good and bad products. They should all be fantastic. And this just does not live up to the expectation. So those are my top five worst products of 2022 so far for the first half of the year. But I do have a couple of honorable mentions and you know, I'm really sad to say this. Again, one of those I actually do like, but some of the ones that I think were disappointing are, okay, so I found the Opalescent Dream palette from Bobbi Brown to be a little bit disappointing. It's basic, it's okay, but with these colors, I was expecting just a little bit more pigmentation, and these are just a little bit um, more like powdery and drier than I thought. It's okay though. Like I don't hate the palette. It just didn't live up to my expectations for it. But I think it's still a nice palette, one that I would use. I would just not purchase it again because again, I was expecting more from this. Another eyeshadow palette I was expecting more from was the Artist Couture Supreme Mauves. And again, I like this palette. I will use this palette. Um, but you look at this and you're expecting to see more pigmentation. These are kind of the best shades from each palette that I'm showing you, but just like the Bobbi Brown, they just aren't as present as you would, you might expect them to be. They're overall with both palettes, they both have the same issue. They're just a little bit drier, a little bit more powdery, and a little bit lighter in pigmentation than I expected. Another product that was a bit disappointing to me was the Charlotte Tilbury Pretty Fresh palette. I actually really like this case. I really like the packaging style of this. If you're somebody who travels a lot, this is a really nice idea, but find it a little overpriced for what you get. And I don't like how these do not have any separate cap. So you can't just take this one out and throw it in your purse. You have to take the whole thing with you. So. I think it's an okay product and I think it would be good for the right person, but for me, it was disappointing. Another product that was a little disappointing, but again, I like this one. This is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Primer. I think it's a nice primer. I don't think it is as nice as the price tag warrants. It's not a favorite primer. I will use it up, but I would not repurchase this because I just think it's average and I was expecting a lot more from Tom Ford. So I was really excited for this and it just fell short of expectations. And then the last thing I wanted to mention, these fell short of my expectation. These are the new Sisley Fido Rouge Shine Lipsticks 
I have to say, I really like these lipsticks. I wear these lipsticks all the time. They are a product I would purchase again, but I was expecting something a lot more unique from Sisley when this launched. I think these are great. I think the high price tag though, like if you're looking to buy these, Selfridges definitely has a much, much better price than the US prices. I think these are a great product, but they are like almost identical to Chantecai Lip Sheiks. And you know, it's not like Lip Sheiks just came out and Sisley, you know, came out with a product around the same time. And you know, maybe they, you know, sometimes brands do that. They all come out with the same thing at the same time. And they're, they're similar because, you know, obviously there are trendy ingredients and so forth that people are using. Shantakai lip cheeks have been around for years. And I love Shantakai lip cheeks, although I preferred them before they added the fragrance. These are very similar to Shantakai lip cheeks. I have to say, I really love the colors that they have in this range. This one here is 41 Sheer Red Love. I love the way they feel. I love the way they look. I don't love the fragrance, which is similar to the Chantecai Lip Sheiks. <laughs> um, but really, you know, I was just expecting more. They are just too similar to something else currently on the market. Uh, you know, so it's just, it was disappointing because I was expecting something more innovative. So, um, you know, it's not a fail because I still love it, but you know, this is, it's in a unique position because it was disappointing, yet I still love it. <laughs> so uh, I hope this video is helpful. I would love to know the things that you have disliked this year and what your thoughts are on any of the products that I shared here. Definitely please share your comments down below in the comment field because it really helps other people when they are shopping and making decisions. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again very soon and have a great day.